turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on this job. Now you're a kid. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. One of the most positive things in my life has been working here at Team J4. I've been here for 30 years, hard to believe. So all this year I'm going to take a look into the vault and check out some of the most memorable people I have met. And you're going to see a few familiar faces. A man who nearly lost everything now works to help others. Carol Meekins has a heartwarming story that's Positively Milwaukee. This is a story about a man and his dog and his mission to serve others. Think about how you can make a difference in someone's life. And it, I, I'm just as broke as the next guy, but I can think I can help them because it's not about money, it's about your heart. I, I recustomized the whole thing. Oh, it's beautiful though. If you live in Lake Geneva, you may have seen Tony Marscalco in his customized orange scooter. He took me for a ride with his loving pet Molly, a sweet-natured Cocker Spaniel. Tony lost almost everything a while back. He survived a serious bout of cancer in his throat. He endured three months of round-the-clock chemo and radiation. Worse, he battled loneliness. Marscalco gets emotional remembering those tough times. It's so important to me that I, I help others to, because I know how it is to be alone. I know how it is to not have anything. And I know what it is to lose things. And I know what a feeling it is to uh, what a feeling it is to not be able to turn to someone. But Tony's best companion during that trying time, his pet Molly. I had a tear in my eye and my dog jumps up my lap and licks the tear off. It's only fitting that Marscalco organized the first annual Lake Geneva dog walk with the help of the Lake Geneva Methodist Church and his pastor. Tony's come into our community and and uh, has helped us to open our eyes to see that there's a world out there. You really felt in your heart that the only way to make it in this world was to give back. Exactly. Look at yourself. Put yourself in someone else's place before you say what you do and do what you do. And if you happen to see Tony, Molly, and their colorful scooter out and about, remember, you're seeing more than a man and his best friend. You're seeing the face of compassion. I got my hand around your heart. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's going to be okay. You're not alone. Now, Tony lives in Texas now, and I've talked to him several times since he moved. Sadly, Molly passed away, and Tony, of course, is heartbroken, but he continues to help others despite his own personal health challenges. High school teachers want to see their students succeed after graduation, but that path does not always include college. Jessica Maduker spoke to a Milwaukee Public School student who's hoping for a promising career in a skilled trade. There's nothing quiet about this classroom. It's a place for students like Terrell to put away the books and pencils and pick up a hammer or a set of pliers. I like that it's hands on. At just 17 years old, Terrell is learning skills that might just land him a career. Today, he's working with sheet metal that will eventually be made into an air duct. It is, in fact, a class um, for students um, in special education in any of our high schools to gain experience and exposure to a variety of different work skills and build up on some of those essential soft skills that are needed. It's called the School to Work Transition Program. Milwaukee Public Schools started it 30 years ago to teach students trade skills that they can use right after graduation if they aren't interested in going to college. According to the Job Network, skilled trade jobs are in high demand, and it's a career that will never go away. The pay isn't too bad either. A licensed electrician can make up to $80,000 a year. This program really is meeting each individual exactly where they're at. This facility, or classroom, if you will, is just one of 25 throughout the city. Larry has been working here for almost 30 years, helping students learn and ultimately watching them go on to thrive in trade careers. He got into it through the MPS program when he was in high school. For me, again, college wasn't the way to go. And here, you, you're learning your hands on. It's, it's a different way of learning. Um, you're, you're, not in a, you're not stuck in a book all day. I am a product of the program. And now he can pass his wisdom on to the next generation. What a great opportunity for Terrell, and he might have a great job right out of high school. We applaud local teachers for giving students the room to explore the very best of themselves. 
grade school is full of all kinds of lessons, not just reading and writing. Students in Kenosha County are teaching themselves about kindness. Julia Fellow explains how a bench is helping. Among beautiful sights and charming twin lakes <coughs> are sounds of a busy playground at Lakewood Elementary School. <coughs> Nestled to the side is a bench emblazoned with the school's Raiders mascot. Whenever you're bullied, you could come sit over here. You don't have to be rude to anyone like people were rude to you. It helps people with like hard times because you don't know if they're going through something. Treat others how you want to be treated. It is called the buddy bench. Nine-year-old Sierra McAllister shared a time when she felt hurt by a classmate. She bullied me for having blonde hair. One day at recess, they both talked it out on the bench. She said that she was sorry about bullying me. And then I said that it's okay and I accepted her apology and then we went to go play tag. That was a big deal for you. What did that apology mean to you? I don't have very many friends and it's always great to have a new one. And eight-year-old Charlie Nelson shared how sitting on this bench turned his recess around. I was kind of sad because a lot of people were crowding one of the slides. So I went over to sit on the buddy bench. One of my friends came over and asked me if they wanted to play. What did you learn that day from that? That not everybody's a bad person. Jim Scher created the bench. That's what we have it for. His construction company has remodeled countless schools across southeast Wisconsin. When we're done building this school, what can we do to leave something behind to help the children be more kind? And you put it in for free? Oh, absolutely. They're all free. These benches are part of a side project a nonprofit he calls Share Cares. So far, he has donated about 100 benches to schools and public parks across southeast Wisconsin. <laughs> Lakewood Elementary's principal believes it has become an important tool for the students' social-emotional learning curriculum, where they are taught to be an upstander. So you can be a bystander and you can watch something happen and not be part of the solution, but then the opposite of that is being an upstander. So seeing something happen and then helping somebody. A powerful lesson in understanding others, which starts with real conversations and simply listening to one another. If they ever got a buddy bench, you could always just go sit on it and you can always make new friends. I just love this idea. The Share or Cares Foundation is not done giving away those benches. If you'd like to apply for one or donate to help build a bench, we do have a link. Just go to tmj4.com. Coming up after the break, we're going to tell you about a new bar in Racine that is hoping to be more inclusive. Plus, meet some prized home health care workers. One woman says she could not do without them. But before we go to a break, don't forget, lunch with me every Wednesday at 12.30. I actually chat with someone doing good in the community who inspires and is truly positively Milwaukee. I recently talked to Karen Dubas, the musical director of the Milwaukee Police Band. She's a retired lieutenant but has spent 43 years working with the force after retirement. What a commitment to the community and to making beautiful music. Join me every week. Listen in, ask questions as I chat with community members just like Karen who are positively Milwaukee. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. Often you only hear complaints these days about the lack of quality of service, but one local company takes pride in their clients. And one customer was so thrilled, she reached out to Positively Milwaukee to let us all know about this business with employees who care. Seventy-year-old Jan Berman is known for her giant heart. For 30-some years, we had greyhounds. And Janice absolutely loved her greyhounds. She just was a good person. All the neighbors loved Jan. She was just sweet. And she cared. She cared for the people who worked for her. She loved her job. Her partner, Pat King, recalls Jan was once a voracious reader and very intelligent. I could ask her anything, and she always had an answer for everything. But Alzheimer's robbed Jan of her ability to share her attributes. Today, 
Jan gets seven days a week care. Pat King had several bad experiences trying to find the right caregivers for Jan. They were terrible. They wouldn't show up. They didn't feel they owed you a call. They wouldn't even call. Um, and it got to the point I was so stressed out. I couldn't do it alone. I needed help. But enter Legacy Home Health Services. King discovered workers with a commitment to compassion. This group has got to be the best I have seen. I've taken care of Janice for five years now. And I went through a lot of different businesses. If you need help, call Legacy Home Health Service. They are fantastic. They will do anything they can for you. We could reposition her. Okay. King cannot say enough about the quality care Jan gets from Legacy Health Services. Owner Chanel Snowden has first-hand experience with Alzheimer's. Chanel's own mother started showing symptoms of the brain disease at the age of 50. She died at 59. It was very hard for me and just to see her go through that and then us having to witness that and not really knowing what to do, not having all the resources that are available now, it just makes me want to give back and say, okay, I've been through this. I know what this person is going through. I know what I can do differently to help them. I think that's what kind of pushes me forward. Chanel's goal is to offer clients like Jan as much quality of life as possible. This makes me feel good inside to know that we've made that impact on somebody. Um, I know it's my passion to give back and just to know that we were able to, you know, be of a help to her is, is very meaningful to me. A lot of people don't pay attention to the caregiver and they just need that break and just going into the home with that empathy and compassion takes so much off of their plate. Such humanity gives Pat King great relief knowing her loved one is in good hands. I been living with Janice for 39 years and I am not going to place her somewhere where I can't make sure she's getting the perfect care and as far as I'm concerned this is the group to hire they will give the perfect care she's okay here she gets wonderful care I'm here for her to watch over her there's nothing to worry about. She's okay. She's doing well. And through her business, Chanel's mom lives on, thanks to the standards of excellence and love passed on to her daughter. She always instilled in me, like, do the right thing, do the right thing. So just knowing that I'm helping people, I can hear her saying, like, good job. Like, I'm, I'm proud of you. Such a great company. Now, we do have a link to Legacy Health Services' Facebook page on our Milwaukee Positively Milwaukee Facebook group if you'd like more information. Stay with us after the break. We're going to show you a Milwaukee area hidden gem that is helping people look their best. But first, time for our Positively Milwaukee Pet of the Week. Hi, I'm Johanna with Hawes, the Humane Animal Welfare Society, and today I have my dear friend Sugar. Sugar is an eight-year-old domestic short hair cat who's looking for a home, and she uh, doesn't seem to be bothered by dogs, although we'd want to make sure that uh, there's a proper introduction done. She could go in pretty much any home. She's very gentle and she does like to cuddle despite her trying to, to wiggle right now. She is a really snuggly girl. She's just excited. She still has a lot of fun and pep in her step. And if you would like to adopt her, you can go to our website at hawspets.org and find out more information. You also can check out some information if you'd like animals like this but you're not interested in making a commitment about our upcoming winter camps. We have one day camps or kids can attend all five days. So if you'd like to find out more about our winter camp or possibly adopting a positively Milwaukee kitty like Sugar, please go to our website at hawspets.org. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. You know, having a beer or a cocktail at the end of the day is often a part of Wisconsin culture, but it's not for everyone. James Grow showcases a new business in Racine that is offering the bar experience minus one small detail. So I'm at a bar and I'm about to have a drink on the job, but hold on, it's not what you think. This place makes drinks like a bar. You can play pool at this bar. 
It looks like a bar, but it has one major twist. It's an alcohol-free bar. This is intoxicated on Main Street in downtown Racine. They only serve mocktails and non-alcoholic beers and wines. I do drink. I just don't drink every day. I don't want to drink every time I go out. But there's always that pressure to have a drink if you go to a bar with a group of people. Intoxicated is helping solve that issue. And we want to make it a normal thing. And we want to make people that don't drink or don't want to drink that day feel comfortable but not have to sacrifice a nightlife, a good time out with friends. This tequila sunrise is everything you'd expect in a tequila sunrise, but you can enjoy as many of them as you want and you don't have to worry about going home. They have gin, whiskey, and vodka alternatives along with all the types of non-alcoholic beer and wine you could want. The atmosphere still feels like a bar. You can play darts, they have shot glasses, and the owners have decided you still have to be at least 21 to enter. What we want to do is bring that bar atmosphere, that bar style life that people know to a non-alcoholic setting. At the end of the day, it's just a place for people to hang out. Intoxicated opens on December 14th. Great idea, and those drinks really do look good. We're big fans of any community effort that makes people feel more welcome. A local organization has been helping people in the Milwaukee area dress for success for 50 years. Cassandra McShepard gives us a peek inside a special place. Father Jean's Help Center has been here in the Milwaukee area for about 50 years. We accept donations of clothing from the community and give it all out for free. We don't have any income or zip code restrictions. We invite anyone in the community who's in need to come and receive clothing. We don't ask a lot of questions, don't ask you to prove your need. Anyone's really welcome to come in and shop and select some items. You've got clothing for men, women, and children. That's correct. We try to serve people of all shapes and sizes from teeny tiny little babies um, all the way up to older folks. And um, we have preemie clothing as big as 2X, 3X, and larger whenever we have the donations available. We have socks, shoes, underwear, jewelry and accessories are also really popular items. Um, and people love like big fancy hats and they love purses and wallets. and. Um, Jewelry is just like that little bit of extra frosting that um, can kind of complete people's look. Choice is important. We want folks to feel like they have that dignity. A lot of our clients don't necessarily want to feel like they just have to receive a hand out. Um, and they want to be able to look like they came from a, a modern store, perhaps coming from um, a Target or a Walmart. Not necessarily that, oh, this was a hand-me-down. There's a lot of dignity in being able to select things that you like. We rely entirely on the generosity of donors from here in the Milwaukee area. Um, people uh, have been donating to us for a really long time. A lot of folks have been saying, oh, I knew Father Gene, or my family knew Father Gene, and we really want to support the mission and ministry. We have such an abundance of clothes in our country and in the world, and it's wonderful for folks to be able to say, maybe I outgrew this, or I don't like this style anymore, but it's still really great to be able to, that giving and receiving and uh, making that a little more circular is really wonderful. Very nice. Now, if you'd like more information on how you can donate to Father Gene's Help Center, we do have a link for you. Just go to tmj4.com. Well, the holidays are pretty much here, which means more family gatherings around the table of food. So we wanted to know, is it Christmas ham for you or Christmas turkey? Definitely Christmas ham. Why do you like that? Only because we already had Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> turkey. I just love turkey. You're not a ham person. No, I'm not a ham person at all. Christmas ham. I don't know, just festive. It just has always been a family tradition. So yeah. Turkey. Oh, just the savoriness of it. Yeah. Homey. Feels homey. Ham. The glaze. <laughs> and we have turkey at Thanksgiving. Pretty much the same thing. I just, I like the taste of it better. I would say ham. I feel like it's uh, less chance of screwing it up. Like, turkey is always dry sometimes, so I would say ham. I prefer the ham. I like the ham better because I just had turkey for Thanksgiving. I'm a turkey guy. I think it's more traditional, and then of course you get the nap afterwards. Turkey. Ham. Oh. <laughs> family, family divided. I think ham is just overrated. It's something you can have all year long, and you don't do turkey as often. Okay, how about you? I just think ham tastes better. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to see how many people think ham is traditional and how many people think it's turkey, but I guess it all depends on the family. If you do have a favorite holiday food that you would like to share or you have a question you want us to ask next week, go to our Positively Milwaukee Facebook group. 
as much fun as it can be to travel and see the world, getting through the airport we all know can be a headache. That's why the Milwaukee Mitchell International Airport has our first reason to smile. The airport launched a new program called the Hidden Disability Sunflower Program. Passengers who may need a little extra help, support, or time can actually pick up one of these green sunflower lanyards at the security desk. Milwaukee is actually the first airport in Wisconsin to launch this idea. Airport leaders say they want to create an inclusive space. Okay, here's a story that will get you into the Christmas spirit, I think. Hundreds of jolly old St. Nick's take to the streets on bikes. This is all part of the 10-mile Santa Rampage ride last weekend. It's been going on for 17 years and benefits Wisconsin Bike Fed. That's a statewide organization that advocates for safer bike riding. <laughs> I love that picture, all those red Santas. I'll be back with my quote of the week. Welcome back. The most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Our quote of the week this Sunday comes from Helen Keller. Helen Keller was deaf and blind. It happened after a childhood illness, but that did not stop her from achieving great things. Aside from being an accomplished writer and disabled rights activist, Helen Keller had a rich social life full of friends and loved ones, and one of her most famous relationships was with Ann Sullivan, her lifelong teacher and companion. When Sullivan died, Keller was holding her hand. Helen Keller knew that love was one of the most beautiful things in the world. And I hope that you'll keep that lesson in mind and close to your heart. And as always, stay positively. Familiar.